to talk about the bottom-up <laughs> uh, economic model. <laughs> and I was sitting between her and uh, Wycliffe. He said, you've really come a long way. Because what is going on in the social media with regard to the high cost of living is, Musalia said, this bottom-up up thing get out, got out of a bottle and put it upside down. <laughs> He has come a long way. Um, that is truly Kenyan conversation. And, and we should admire it. And that's why we are here today. Uh, Usali was asking whether, I, sh whether I, I would feel comfortable inviting him. I said, why not? We, we come a long way. If uh, indeed Muriu can talk about uh, those dowry arrangements, between me and Musalia, we come a long, long way. And so, doesn't matter who invites who. Uh, and, and you see, um, again on a light note, make sure you give Musalia a very big chair <laughs> and, and put, next, put me next to it. I can tell you, he was feeling very uncomfortable. <laughs> Feeling very uncomfortable, and because we must get rid of this big African big man syndrome. If we are going to change this country, I can tell you, if Azimio forms the next government, one of the things that I issue is executive order number one: is we shall not carry those state chairs from Nairobi to Nakuru. <laughs> and you will sit next to each other and enjoy each other's company. Because, as I said, yeah, don't make us uncomfortable. Honestly, men do cliff and I feel, not him, we are very comfortable. Um, and that, I think, is a spirit, particularly if it's a workshop arrangement, where we are all the same. And so, I made the effort to come. And our recent example of high taxes is, is there for all of us to see. Madam Rono, with great respect to you, the bottom is not only leaking, but it's going down. I remember that uh, during campaigns we had some problems with people trying to explain the model. And some of them may say, bottom of the bottom are going down. Uh, people are hurting. People are hungry. And if you like to borrow your parlance, the hustler is suffering and is crying out for help. We have no option but uh, um, we have to be bold. If we don't slay this ghost of a corrupting influence of money, we have heard of wash wash, we have heard of things. How do we go to the future? How will the child, um, Toto Amaskini, Kenya, he ever claim to become? Hmm? Of course, William thinks he's, uh, he, he came from selling eggs or something. He did his best. But how many more uh, will be able to make that kind of money and make it to leadership? If you allow me, my brother Wycliffe, I'll say, why are we shy about prime cabinet secretary? I'm going to invite him now. Why not just go to Bomber's draft, the hybrid system? We have had this representation. And just say, we shall create the office of the prime minister. We shall be responsible for parliamentary business. Go out there and answer, answer questions without necessarily doing away with the presidential system. Because it was there in black and white. I think some of these friends will agree. All right? Create the office of official position. Therefore, it makes sense to have the office of the of, of the lead of opposition, where you have the prime minister answering to parliament, okay? But people are scared. You come up with with uh, with uh, <laughs> descriptions I've never heard of prime cabinet secretary and executive order. Let us regularize these things. This is our country. We do not have another country. And while God gives us breath, let's do the right thing. Karibu sana and I am Steve Kalonzo Musioka, come from very far. Uh, 
We have a long history. If you go down memory lane, uh, we were in the Kano ruling party together. Um, in fact, he was the first one to hold a big national post as organizing the secretary of Kano there. Um, we came in later with the others. Uh, we were in parliament more or less at the same time. He was there slightly ahead of me. But I remember we went to Germany together uh, because we were both members of the, the parliamentary football team. And if I recollect very well, Kalonzo scored a goal in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and above that, um, uh, we've been VPs. But now let me come to the interesting one. Uh, when I was Minister for Finance, Kalonzo was Minister for Foreign Affairs. During the turbulent period of 1993, all the way to 1997, an extremely volatile period of uh, about five years, It was not easy for Kenyans. And I wanted to bring this out because he talked about it. And I think it's, it's an issue that Kenyans should not miss. Because the scenario we are living through now is more or less a replica of what we were going through in 1993, that period. So, Kalonzo Musyoka would be on a plane to one part of the globe, both to seek political, financial intervention, and was on a plane to go to the other. We were, had inherited an economy that had been devastated. Aid had been terminated. We were in severe debt. Inflation was running high. The shilling was on a, have, getting a beating the way we are getting now. Prices of commodities were spiraling. We are exactly there. So the cost of living was bad. So is it now. But the long and short of it is this, that Steve, you and I, we carried this. The nation had to go through some pain, but we recovered. So I'm drawing that parallel today to just emphasize the point that what we are going through is because we cannot run away from the fact that the previous regime overborrowed. They put us in a serious financial crisis. To get out of it, and I said it in Parliament, it's going to take us at a minimum, maybe three years. Because we are seeing debt that we have never seen before. So the only thing we can do is really to coalesce and then talk together and work together and then start dealing with these issues. Because there's no way we'll get the open passes from the international community at this stage. Things are tight. There's no way we can live without enhancing revenue collection locally. We have to. Otherwise, we'll be in default. And the consequences of default are known. 
We had to go and renegotiate our debt at that time, to schedule our debt. My brother knows. We went through those difficult times. So it is important that we don't take a shortcut and just say that the cost of living is high. Let us ask ourselves also, how did we get here? How did we get here? If Stephen Kalonzo today was the president, the truth of the matter is he has no physical room to borrow. He can't. He won't access those funds. So it is going to be a journey for us to get back systematically, progressively, so that we can stabilize uh, the economy. And good signs are beginning to show. When there's ample investment in production, we are seeing the prices of food commodity, commodities, basic food commodities, beginning to decline. The statistics of the Kenya National Bureau is showing that inflation has dropped to 6.7%, despite the shilling having gotten a beating. So if we do things right and we cooperate, we can also start turning uh, the, the tables. And I want to assure you that I'm in full support, and the government is in full support, of successful conclusion of the bipartisan discussions of conservation that are taking place in Parliament today. We want to see something positive come out of it, and we'll go out of our way to make sure that we also see some positivity through that process. We have a country to defend, to protect, to live in, so we have no intention of walking away from that uh, particular responsibility. The second thing, or maybe before I go to the formal remarks, which I just want to highlight is that um, over and above this, and as we look at the elections and we do the review, sooner or later, we are also going to make public uh, a draft bill so that there can also be proper public participation and dialogue around it on the issue of transition of executive authority. Because what we have is simply the assumption of office bill which basically just deals with the ceremony at the end of the day. A committee is set up, they prepare, and they're just preparing for the swearing in of uh, the elected president, and then it's basically done. But transition, and even as you talk of transition in this, in this conversation, transition is beyond assumption of office. We want Kenyans to go further and make sure that transition is not just at the helm. What are the components that need to be dealt with for smooth transition of executive authority? In the last election, we saw things that we have never seen before. As much as uh, we may raise issues about IBC, but we also saw things that we never saw before from political, the political class. We were witnessing things at bombers that have never been witnessed at all. <coughs> we came across situations where even public officers who under the law are supposed to do something 
who are not doing it. Even a government printer refusing to print, to gazette the results of an election. The IBC issuing their certificate and expecting the government printer to do what they are supposed to do. The government printer was not doing it because presumably waiting for instructions from another corner. That could have plunged the country into a crisis. We were seeing gazette notices of the outgoing president appointing people after he has vacated office. Seeing ministers appointing people way after a new government has gone in. So somebody somewhere was hiding gazette notices to make sure that these don't come out. So there are a lot of issues that need to be dealt with so that Kenyans can heal. Because we are talking too much on one side, but we are forgetting that there are people there. And we must also make it clear to the people that the commissioners do not vote. It is the people who vote, not the commissioners. So we must also get away from this fallacy of saying that I had four commissioners and you had three, or I had three and you had four. They're not the ones who vote. It is the citizen, the ordinary citizen of Kenya, who casts the vote, and that is how it goes. Now, I just thought I wanted to set some record straight because uh, it's not my duty to defend the IBC per se, but I think it's good for us to look at these things in totality. Uh, but more important, we need to ask ourselves fundamental questions. How should ministers behave? during the transition of authority? How should PSS behave? How should the person who is supposed to do a statutory duty or constitutional responsibility, how should they behave? What kind of expenditure should we be looking at? There's the famous uh, article, what, two, two, two to three. How do you balance the management of that article within the Constitution without paralyzing uh, the operations of government, but at the same time, so that you make sure that uh, uh, a, an outgoing government is not engaging in a scorched earth policy of literally plugging everything out of the coffers so that the next government is set up to difficulty. So these are some of the issues, depending on which side of the fence you sit. These, but at the end of the day, these are very practical issues that will need to be uh, delved into. And I'm sure with the kind of uh, leadership that uh, we have in the committee, uh, I'm sure uh, with an open mind, uh, our teams there can give us a unified position, harmonized position that will be healthy for the country. So there's a lot of burden uh, on Colonzo's shoulders. The way it was uh, when he was foreign minister, uh, that burden has come back from a different perspective so that we see how uh, we can forge and move the country forward.